blood of Jesus is a serious thing. And, and it can be uh, because of our culture and because of um, tradition, it can be something that is lightly esteemed and is taken for granted and, and not thought about very often. But you have to understand that the blood of Jesus is the representation of a covenant that, that God made with you. Um, that God made with, uh, he made with Jesus, and by virtue of that, he's also made with us. And, and so, there, it's, it's like an exodus when um, the destroyer was coming through, the last plague was coming through, and, and so, um, so God told the Israelites, take the blood of a lamb and put on the doorpost and the destroyer will not, when it sees the blood, it will not, it will pass over you. It will not be able to get through. And, and so the blood of the lamb should always be what sickness and death and, and anything else that tries to come against you. It's the thing that it should see first so that it could never even get through the door. And so that you're sitting there having to uh, figure out where did I, how did I let this in? What's going on? Um, uh, we, we shouldn't even be, that, be to that place. We, we are behind the blood of the Lamb. And so when sickness and disease and all of that comes knocking at the door, when the door opens, it's Jesus that they see and they just run and flee in Jesus' name. But the, the reason why sometimes that, it's so, that so many people deal with so many things that come along uh, and affect the rest of the world is because everything that we receive out of God's love, out of His favor, out of His grace comes as a result of our faith and what we believe. Jesus said over and over, He said, be it unto you according to your faith. And, and unfortunately, in our um, in our culture, in our church culture, uh, we've become very passive. Uh, I say we, I'm talking about church at large in general, very passive about whatever comes in. Well, then that's just what God wants to happen. And so we have faith. And when I say we, I'm not talking necessarily about you. I'm just talking about the church at large. We have faith. We believe that everything that comes is allowed by God to come into our life. And so that belief, that faith gives access, allows those things to have access. It's because of wrong teaching. It's because of wrong thinking. And, it, and, and we can't allow that wrong thinking to dominate our mind. Our mind. Um, but it's especially important, you know, even now, I mean, we've entered into a season. I know there's a lot of people here uh, uh, we experienced some, there's a lot of people that's experienced a different, you know, uh, the, the flu bug coughs, you know, thanks for coughing right then, Jennifer, the timing is perfect, <laughs> but, uh, so, so let me, let me just tell you, uh, a little, uh, an event that happened last week. Okay. Um, as, as you well know, uh, so, so last, last week or the week of Thanksgiving, we, you know, we had uh, two funerals that we did, two homegrowing celebrations, one for Jeff Lane that's been a member of this church for 30 years, another that was a daughter of somebody that comes to church here, um, um, but she didn't attend, attend church here. And, and so if, if, we're, if you're not cautious, you'll allow that to dominate your thinking. And if you allow that to dominate your thinking, then it can create um, fear and it can create uh, uncertainty. And when we have the spirit of life in Christ Jesus that lives on the inside of us, and so I've got to keep my mind stayed on him. He'll keep me in perfect peace, the word of God says, whose mind is stayed on him. And then Romans 8 says that if the spirit of him that raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, that same spirit that dwells in you will also quicken or make alive your mortal bodies. Okay, so I'm not going to be focusing on those 
um, that have passed on. I celebrate that they are in heaven. They're experiencing joy forevermore. They're experiencing life forevermore. And it is awesome. And But while I'm here, I'm also going to be focusing on the fact that the spirit of life in Christ Jesus, that same spirit is dwelling on me, in me. It's in me. It's on me. It's through me. It's all over the place. And he's given life to my body. And that the blood of Jesus is that demarcation point. It's, it's where sickness can't get through. Death can't get through. Okay. Now, I have, to, I have to be bold about that. I have to be strong about that. So last, I believe it may have been Saturday night, um, uh, Seth and I were, uh, Brooke and Daniel were in town, and, uh, and, and Seth and I were, were downstairs watching a movie, and um, late at night, everybody else had gone to bed, and in the middle of that, uh, Brooke came downstairs, and, um, and we, we like to have a lot of fun as a family or whatever, and we're always joking around, but Brooke sat down there on the ottoman, and she said, um, she said, Dad, she said, I need you to pray with me. She said, this is serious. I was like, oh, okay, this is serious. So this is not time for joking or whatever. She said, this is serious. And, and she said, while I was laying in bed, she said, I felt this dark presence come over me, and I literally felt like I was about to die. And, and she said, and since I've moved to Wisconsin, she said, I've dealt with this on and off. And I don't know what to do about it. I said, well, I said, first of all, I said, that thing can't come into this house. Period. I said, I said, this is my house. Okay. It's, this, is not a, this is not a question of, you know, well, I wonder what's going on and all that kind of stuff and be wimpy about it. No, no, no. There is, uh, um, Jesus is a mighty warrior. He is King of kings and he is Lord of lords. And he is the captain of the host of the armies of Israel. And that's the same Jesus that lives on the inside of you. And he came, glory to God, he came to defeat death, to defeat sickness. He came uh, to defeat all principalities, all darkness. And, and that same warrior is on the inside of you. He is the lamb, but he is also the lion of the tribe of Judah. And there are times that you need to allow the lion of the tribe of Judah to rise up on the inside of you and to resist and allow him to be the one to resist through you what Satan is trying to do. Don't be passive about what's happening in your life. And so I told her, I said, now, um, I said, I said, first of all, I said, that thing... I, that thing can't come into this house and, and, and we'll deal with it right now, period. You know, and then I just began to minister to her before we began to pray, talking to her about the importance of, of, of spending time in the word, renewing your mind to who you are, to who Jesus is in you. Fear comes out of a, a lack of understanding of your identity in Christ Fear comes when you don't know who Christ is in you and through you. Fear comes when you don't have confidence and faith in, in, what, in, in what is available to you right now. And so, uh, so as I was talking to her, I said, so, and I relayed the story to her about years ago when I um, had nightmares dealing with demonic spirits. I'm not, I don't have time to go into that. But what I had to do is, is I had to renew my mind to who I am. And so the word of God says that greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. He says, I have been made more than a conqueror through him that loved us. Says that God has not given me the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. And I just told, I told Brooke, I said, you need to take that word and you need to begin to put that in like I did all those years ago. And it took me a year or so, you know, every time these, uh, these nightmares would come and these demonic spirits would come in, it would take me a year, took me a year to, to, to say, you know, no, greater is he that is in me to the point that finally in those nightmares, I was finally able, I believed what I had been putting into my heart. And then I was able to say in the name of Jesus and those things departed. But see, faith does not originate in your head. Faith comes up out of your spirit. Faith comes up out of your heart. And so uh, for some of us, we've listened 
to the wrong messages, to the wrong teaching for so long, or we've, we've listened to the world for so long that we've allowed that to fill our heart. And out of your heart, the Bible says, guard your heart with all diligence for out of it flow the issues of life. So what am I doing? I'm now starting to put into my heart that which the word of God says about me. And so I began to encourage her to, to spend that time Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. God has not given me the spirit of fear, but of love and a power and of sound mind. Uh, you know, uh, thanks be unto God who always causes me to triumph. I said, so now let's just pray for this. Let's, pr let's pray about this. Now, we were, uh, uh, she was sitting on the ottoman. I stood behind her praying. Seth was still sitting on the couch just listening. And, um, and, and so I just began to pray. I rebuked the spirit of death. I commanded it to leave in Jesus' name. See, you as a believer have been given authority. You're not waiting for God to do the rebuking. Why? Because you're part of the body of Christ and the Spirit of God is in you. And so now you have to operate in the authority that God has given you. So I began to rebuke the spirit of death and uh, on her and... Um, Oh, or that try to attach, whatever that spirit was. I said, look, you cannot come into this house. I command you to leave in the name of Jesus. You have no right. You have no place here, period. And then, and, and you know, last week I talked a little bit about praying in the spirit. And, uh, and so uh, I, just, I, just began to, I just began to pray in the spirit. Now listen, and this is very important. Um, the early church was a church of prayer. And... You don't have to try to rush through everything. Sometimes, sometimes we want to we want to pray a quick prayer, speak a quick thing, and be done with it. But a lot of times the prayers that we pray come out of our head and not from here. And and so as I was praying, initially that prayer came from here and from knowledge that I had here. But then in the middle of that, I sense, so be open to the Spirit. Always have ears to hear what the Spirit is saying. I sensed that the job wasn't done yet. And so I stayed, but I didn't know what else to pray. So guess what I started doing? I started praying in the Spirit. I started praying in other tongues. Why? Because the Spirit knows what needs to be done in that situation. So this is exactly what I was, I was talking about last week. So the Spirit of God knows what needs to be done. And, and so as I was praying in the spirit and, and Brooke began to pray in the spirit and we were praying and, and just taking our time, I just sensed, I still sensed that, that there, there wasn't a release yet to be done. Don't be so quick to try to get to the next appointment or to do the next thing that you shut off that moment of prayer in your life. You need to take care of things of the spirit first. You know, I mean, I could have hurried up and said, I want to get back to my movie that we were watching. No, no, the things that are eternal, things of the Spirit are way more important than what's going on here in the natural. Hallelujah. So, anyway, so we were praying, praying, praying in the Spirit. And then I just, I just sensed, I said, I said, Brooke, I just, I just believe that uh, while I've, I've rebuked the devil, that you need, that you need to tell it to go. That you need to use the words of your mouth and tell it to go. I said, so just do that right now. And she said, devil, in the name of Jesus, I command you to leave me alone. You have no right. You have no authority over my body. You spirit, I command you to leave in Jesus' name and to bother me no more. I mean, it was like, whew. I mean, it was powerful when she did it. It was anger in that girl's voice. But let me tell you something. As soon as she did that, As soon as she did that, not as soon as her dad did that, as soon as she did that for herself, all of a sudden, the presence of God, the peace of God, it flooded the room. The atmosphere completely changed. I'm talking about this, uh, this warmth. Everything started happening. I'm like, I almost, I was standing. I, I had to kind of brace myself. It was so strong, the power of God that hit us to the point that Seth sitting on the couch went, whoa. He's like, I felt that. And we stayed there in that, mo in that moment for about five or ten minutes, just allowing the presence of God and His power come in comfort, do His work. 
It was the most amazing thing that I've experienced. The blood of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. The covenant that God has given with each and every one of us. You need to be bold enough and believe enough to stand on that covenant. To believe in the blood and what it means to you. That Satan can't step over that. Darkness can't step over that. Sickness can't step over that. Believe it. Speak it. Know it. In Jesus' name. Now look, this is, this is God's relationship with you. And so what I want to do is I want to, I want to ask um, you to sing this again. Sing the chorus. Go into that bridge. Oh, the blood. And then just finish it up. And as we, as we sing through this, I want you just to fix in your mind what Jesus did on the cross. I want you to fix on your mind the risen king. He's victorious, and he is fighting for you, and he is in you, and you don't allow those things to come into your life anymore. And if you feel like that you need to declare some things during this moment, then bless God, you just declare them in Jesus' name. But you fix your eyes on him. You fix your eyes on his blood. You fix your eyes on his word. You fix your eyes on the covenant that he has with you because he loves you that much.